started. <laughs> having a wonderful day. Thank you for joining us. Um, so just real quick, we want to tell you a little bit about what we are um, and what we do. Um, so we, a bunch of health and wellness professionals have come together um, to create some content for you because we want to make sure that you're feeling supported, um, make sure that you are taking care of yourself in this time of uncertainty. We want you to thrive. Um, and so we've called ourselves uh, the San Antonio Family Support Coll uh, Collective. Um, and yeah, so this is our first talk. And we're very excited and it's going to be about working well at home. So I don't know, Erica, if you want to uh, say anything. Sure. So um, today we're going to keep things, we're going to offer a little bit of both. We're going to show you um, a presentation on our screen, um, which will start in a moment. And we're also going to do some interactive stuff. So feel free to participate and to kind of try these different things that we're showing you as far as the stretches are concerned. Um, but yeah, I hope y'all enjoy it. Okay. So um, like we said, this is this is our new logo, so you can um, look around and if you see this, you know that it's gonna be something that we are um, presenting. And so, like we said, this is a group of us throughout San Antonio, of health and wellness professionals that have just joined together so that we can support you as best we can. Awesome. So just to tell you a little bit about me. So hi, my name's Nicole Alarcon. Um, I'm a licensed massage therapist um, and I own a mostly mobile massage practice called Massage Mobile. Um, basically, we provide massage to you at, our, at your home or um, we can eat, you can even come and visit us at our office. Um, and we do something called Yo Massage, which I can talk to you a little bit later on. Um, but we really try to focus on pain management, um, the pre and postnatal massage, um, as well as um, educating our clients, which is why I'm so excited that uh, we are able to share this information because I love talking about this and educating you on how you can, um, you know, be a little bit more successful in your body when you're not on the massage table. So that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and this is my page. So um, I am Dr. Erica Hernandez. I am a doctor of chiropractic um, and I practice at Empowered Chiropractic Plus Massage here in San Antonio. Uh, Nicole and I are actually sweet mates, so we're in the same building. Um, and we do have a family practice. Um, within the practice, we do focus more on perinatal care. So um, it would, you know, Families that are trying to conceive, um, dealing with infertility, maybe they're already on a pregnancy journey um, or in the postpartum phase even. We do have several men who also come in to get adjusted, um, husbands or fathers. And then we also do a lot of pediatric care as well. I am, um, I like to call myself a retired birth doula now. I did used to do a lot more doula work. I am not able to do as much now, um, but I still use that knowledge and education to empower the families that I support. So here, this just gives you a little kind of synopsis of what we are going to go over today. And we'll jump right in. Awesome. So the first thing we want to talk to you is about ergonomics. Um, you know, especially in San Antonio, we have this shelter in place happening, um, which means more and more people are working from home. So, you know, being aware of, of where and how you're working is so, so important. So with all of my computer workers, there are four things I like to talk about. Um, so the first one being workspace. Okay, this if you can, please, 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 I beg of you, do not work from a couch, from a bed, or from a floor. Um, you know, that is just going to be so killer on your back and your neck. So if you can, please, please um, make your workspace your dining room table, um, or maybe even a desk if you have that available for you, okay? So important that you have that kind of set space. Um, the other part here is going to be to lift your screen. So um, especially with if you're working from a laptop, uh, we want to try to elevate that to our eye level. So you can do this by using uh, boxes. You can use books. I actually have my laptop on a, a couple of books right now. Um, just something to bring that up so that you're not looking down and putting all of this weight um, into your, your anterior neck and making your, your neck and back muscles work um, at too hard, if that makes sense. 
Um, the other thing that I like to talk about is um, going wireless, especially if you have that laptop and it's elevated, um, you may want to invest in a wireless keyboard as well as a wireless mouse. Um, and the reason I say that is because when we are elevated like that, we don't want to have like T-Rex arms, right? We want to make sure that our body are, is, uh, certain body parts are in 90 degree angles, which leads me to the body positioning. So when you're sitting down at your table or at your desk, uh, you really want to make sure that your feet are, are planted firmly on the ground, uh, the knees are at a 90 degree angle, um, your back is resting comfortably against the back of your chair um, when you go to type, your arms are at 90 degree angles, and then your chin uh, is at a 90 degree angle. So again, you're not looking too far down or looking you know, too far up, you know, depending how elevated you have your screen. Um, one other thing I do like to mention too, especially if you are somebody who has a um, like two screens whatever screen that you are working from mainly make sure that's the one that's set in front of you okay i used to work in an office i had two screens and so i'd always be like kind of looking off to the side and that can create a little bit of tension or pain so making sure that everything is centered as much as it possibly can be um, Another just kind of quick tip too um, that I told some people is also make sure that that computer is not too far back. Because when we start to really get into things, we tend to start like leaning forward and hunching forward. So really make sure that that screen is pulled close into you, again, with enough space for you to type and mouse around comfortably. But that way it's not too far back that you're forced into this kind of hunched over position. Um, Erica, is there anything you'd like to add? So the only other things that I would say is, since I take care of a lot of um, expecting um, people, is that if you are in a seated position, you want to kind of make sure that your feet are flat on the floor and toes are pointed ahead, um, straight in front of you, as opposed to turned out to the sides. This is going to be best for your pelvis position. Um, and then something else that can be helpful is to just draw your shoulder blades back and down if you're able to again there um, and make sure that your head is in upright neutral position I like what you said about the shoulder blade thing. Um, something, if you do yoga, I know there's a lot of yoga teachers who'll say, you know, put your shoulder blades in the back, in your back pocket. So you're kind of mm -hmm. rolling your back and just kind of putting it in your back pocket and bringing those shoulders down. So if you need a visual. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great visual. Okay, let's see. So I'm going into continuing rather, <clears throat> excuse me, that work space positioning. Here you can see an image just um, as Nicole was mentioning about having the laptop stacked up on some books with the mobile um, or wireless keypad and mouse there. Um, and then you can also see some other things in the picture that she has. So I'll scroll down a little bit more. Um, and you can see here that she has a blanket folded up on the pillow, sorry, folded up on the chair rather, with a pillow for some lumbar or lower back support um, to make sure that you are providing the best possible scenario for you to use good posture. Um, you can also see in the first image there that she kind of has her legs like wide set and she's kind of sinking down. And that is something that tends to happen if you're sitting down for too long, um, that you just get really comfortable and kind of ease into um, whatever position, I don't know, kind of feels most comfortable, I suppose. Um, but these are all good modifications that you can make to your workspace. Exactly. I mean, you can see a huge difference in body mechanics from that first picture to the second. Um, and my chair, because this might be similar to you, again, every body is different and every um, household item that you're using is going to be a little different. But for me, my chair was a little too low. So putting that blanket underneath helped raise me up a little bit so that my feet and my legs were hitting those 90 degree angles and different things like right. that. Getting creative, mm -hmm. um, you know, thinking outside the box. If you don't have, I mean, I don't know who doesn't have books, but if you don't have books or you don't have boxes available, um, you could even use like Tupperware and just put something inside of that to make sure that it's, you know, a little bit more um, stable. So, you know, think outside the box when trying to come up with these different things to get you into a place that's going to be a little bit more comfortable for your body. All right. Okay, let's go up here. 
<laughs> taking breaks. Oh my gosh. Taking breaks. This is so, so key. I cannot stress enough about this one. Um, you know, definitely want to make sure that you are taking a break from your computer every one to two hours. Okay. And that you can do this to either stretch, to go for a walk, get a snack, hydrate, use the restroom, you know, meditate, whatever, excuse me, whatever it is that you need to do, just it needs to be away from your workspace. Okay. So you want to make sure that you're physically getting up and leaving that spot. Okay. Because what's going to happen is when you take these breaks and you commit this time, it's going to help you reset your body's natural positioning. And it's going to prevent you from getting into a comfortable position, um, but a comfortable, or excuse me, it's going to get your body from feeling comfortable in a wrong position, if that makes sense. Um, you know, all of this is, is kind of like um, muscle memory. If, you know, when we're working, we're working for like, what, eight hours a day. And so you may be in that position for hopefully not the whole, but that long. So when we're in a position where we're not comfortable or not practicing those proper body mechanics, um, our body remembers that. And we don't want that to happen because we want to make sure that we're in a position that's going to feel good and make sure that we're not going to have any negative effects down the line. Um, but so what I recommend, because I've, I've heard the excuses, you know, I, I'm getting too involved in my work or I don't have time to take the break. You do, okay? You've got to make sure that you're committing that time to yourself. So you can put an alarm on your phone. You can put an alarm on your computer. If you are somebody who's very appointment-based, you know, make an appointment in your calendar with yourself for five minutes. That way, you know, maybe all your other coworkers know that, okay, you're blocked off from 10 to 10.05, and that's your time to go take that break, stretch, or do whatever it is that you need to do. Is there anything you'd like to add, Erica? So the only other note that I would say is um, in with what you already mentioned as far as hydrating, um, just so that you have kind of an idea of how much you should be drinking hydration. We are talking about water here. Um, so not sugary drinks, you know, or um, anything other than water. We want you to be getting as much water as you need because your muscles need it. Um, and so with that, you want to ideally be drinking about half of your body weight in ounces per day to stay hydrated. Um, if you are dehydrated, you may even need to increase that um, a bit or look into adding some minerals, things like that. Um, and then as far as your snacks go, we are in a time um, that unfortunately is associated with a higher level of stress maybe than we are used to. Um, if you are a parent, then you may be doing a whole lot of things every day from home, which may include working, taking care of children, making sure that they're getting their work done. Um, and so you want to think about the snacks that you're putting into your body. Try to um, do a lot of veggies and fruits and things like that, things that are going to give you good energy, things that are good building blocks um, for your body so that you can um, make sure that you're staying healthy during this time. Um, and I think that, that's about it. So let me scroll up again. So here, this is just again a little reminder um, that your calm mind is the ultimate weapon against your challenges. So again, going into that stress side, you want to make sure that you are finding ways to lower the stress in your life. Um, and so whether that is getting up a few minutes earlier before your children if you have them every morning um, and doing a meditation we have some other great um, professionals that will be coming up later in the series that are going to go over things like that with you taking the time to stretch taking the time to fuel your body um, with things that are good for you so that again you can relax the mind and hopefully continue forward in a healthy manner Exactly. I mean, you've got to be able to commit that time to yourself in order for you to do your job more effectively. You're going to feel a lot better. Your family, because everybody, you know, again, close quarters, they're going to be a lot calmer if, you know, you're taking that time, making sure they're taking that time as well. So, Very um, true. yeah, um, we wanted to show you, though, we have a quick five minute um, stretch routine that you can do for yourself. So if you want to go ahead um, and switch to the, the full screen. Sure. Um, so let me scroll up to this next slide. There are going to be eight steps. So this is where you can kind of find a spot to get comfortable so that you can participate with us if you would like. Yes. I'm going to stop that screen share for a moment. All okay. Right. So 
I'm, I'm going to start us off. Okay. So like I mentioned, this stretch routine is five minutes. We have all the steps listed for you. Um, so that if you forget, um, you can go back and refer to that again, it'll be up on our YouTube channel. Um, so, and if you'd like, you can do it with me here. So we'll start, you know, maybe at your desk. Let's just say you're, you're at your desk. Okay. We're going to start with a little bit of head and face massage. Okay. So just with soft fingers for about 10 seconds, we're going to start at our temples. Um, and we're going to just create small circles here, just providing pressure that feels comfortable for you. You can, you know, kind of stay in that temple area, or if you want to get crazy, uh, you can spread out those fingertips and get the side of that, uh, of the skull here, all of the musculature that runs around this area, just creating small circles again for 10 seconds. Now from here, after that 10 seconds is up, we're gonna move down to our jaw, okay? We hold a lot of tension here, again, creating those small circles in one direction. Maybe you reverse down to the next direction, but we hold a lot of tension in this area. Um, you know, a lot of times we'll like clench our drop jaw or maybe at night we grind. Some of us have TMJ dysfunction. So alleviating that can help relieve a lot of that stress. From here, we're gonna move to a little bit of an anterior neck or front of neck stretch. So to do this, we're gonna cross our hands one on top of the other. And we're gonna put that just slightly below the collarbone. From here, we're going to tag a little bit of weight in the elbows, and then we're gonna send our gaze up, up to the sky, okay? We're gonna be in the center position here for about 10 seconds, feeling that stretch all through the front of the neck. And then once that 10 seconds is up, with our gaze still uh, looking upwards here, we're gonna just slightly move our head to either the right or the left side, feeler's choice here. Okay, so I'm going to the right, again, stretching through the side of the front of the neck, holding for about 10 seconds. And then once those 10 seconds are up, we switch over to the opposite side, working into the other side of the neck. Again, holding that for 10 seconds. Um, this is a really important area to work because when we are working, we tend to put a little bit more pressure into the front of the body and the, our back muscles and back of neck. <coughs> Um, uh, alleviate any of the The next stretch, again, you can continue sitting, is going to be more of a shoulder stretch or a trapezius stretch. So you're going to take, let's just say, our left hand, you're going to anchor it to the chair. And then this is social distancing, guys, and self quarantining. <laughs> I'm sure you guys have dealt with all of this as well. Anchor that hand down. We're going to take our other hand and we're going to place that on the top of the head and then guide that ear down, okay, down to that shoulder. And here we'll hold this for about 10 seconds and you can do a couple of things. You can hold this here or if you want you can roll that head forward or you can roll that head back. Again, every body is different so kind of feel around, see what feels good for you. After that 10 seconds, we release and we're gonna repeat on the other side. So anchoring that, that hand down to the bottom of our chair or our seat, bringing the other hand on top of the head, guiding that head down towards the ear, and then either holding here for 10 seconds or rolling that head forward, rolling that head back, you know, moving how it feels comfortable and good for you. From here, we're going to um, get our juices flowing in our hands and our wrists from, you know, being on the keyboard or mousing around or what have you. So we're going to do some wrist rolls, okay, simultaneously with both wrists. We'll roll for about 10 seconds, going in one direction. And once those 10 seconds are up, we're going to reverse, okay? Again, reverse to the opposite side for another 10 seconds. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, once our 10 seconds is up, we're gonna stretch into our forearms, okay? So we wanna stick our hand out, kind of like we're saying stop, and we're going to pull our fingers back gently. You don't wanna to get too um, intense here. Now you can either hold this for 10 seconds, or if you like, you can hold for five and then do the thumb for five seconds. So that's kind of up to you as well. So stretching into that wrist, being very gentle, only doing what feels comfortable for you, and then we switch. Okay, bring the other hand out as if to say stop, pull those fingers back, hold either for 10 seconds or you can hold for five and then do five for the thumb. Okay, it's gonna feel really nice there. Now, after that, we're going to stand up. Okay, so I'm gonna back up here so you can see, we're gonna get into a lunge type of position. Okay, you wanna make sure that you're near a desk or near a wall, but let's just say, um, 
we're gonna lunge with our right leg back. And it doesn't have to be like a super deep lunge, just something, a nice easy lunge here. Okay, we wanna stretch this front of our hip because we've been sitting down for so long. So we're gonna bring our arms up over our head, and then if you need to, I have bad balance, I'm gonna hold on uh, to my wall or to my desk, and we're just gonna, oops, excuse me, I'm going the wrong way. We're gonna lean over, okay? So we're opening up that side body. So whatever leg is back, that's the, arm, or that's the side, uh, we're leaning towards the opposite side there. Okay, and then we switch. So now my left leg is gonna go back, arms are gonna go up overhead. I'm gonna grab onto my desk or my wall, and I'm just gonna lean over, opening up that side body and opening up that uh, hip flexor area. Okay, now the next thing, I'm gonna move my screen here, so just bear with me. Um, you wanna find a door frame. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our chest. Now, this is important because when we're working on our computer, we tend to go into internal rotation. Again, our back muscles are working really hard. All of these muscles, uh, these pecs are getting um, really shortened, so we need to kind of um, balance that out. So stand in a door frame. Make sure your feet are firmly planted underneath the hips. You're gonna take, let's say, our left hand um, into a 90 degree angle, and you're gonna hook that in your door frame. From here, you're going to twist that upper body open, and you're gonna hold this for about 30 seconds, okay? So twisting, you hold 30 seconds. So then we're gonna switch. My other arm goes into a 90 degree angle. I hook it onto my door frame. I twist my upper body open, Feeling that nice stretch, opening up that chest, again, holding for 30 seconds. Beautiful. Okay, we're not done yet. One more thing, let's move ourselves back so we can see. And we go into a piriformis stretch. So you do need your chair for this. This is kind of bringing you back to your, your little workplace here. You're gonna sit with your bottom at the very edge of your seat. Let me move this down so you can see my legs. But your bottom's gonna be at the very edge of your seat. You're going to bring your, um, let's say our left leg or left ankle up onto our right knee. Now for some of you who have really tight hips, this may be enough for you and that's perfectly fine. If you need more, you can gently push into that uh, knee. Or if you wanna intensify this even more, you can start to hinge forward at the hips the key here is to make sure that you're thinking chest or heart out. If you hunch over and round, you're not gonna get the same stretch. So you really wanna try to keep this upper body straight, leaning forward. Now for me, this is all I can do. I've got really tight hips, so this is pretty intense. And then we hold that for 30 seconds, and then we switch. Okay, bringing the opposite leg up. Again, this might feel good for you. You can press gently into that knee. Um, and then if you wanna intensify it, we hinge at the hips again, heart open, heart out, leaning into it here, feeling all of that stretch in the hips and the piriformis, okay? And then you're done, you're, you're back at your desk, you've done your five minute stretch. Erica, did you wanna show them some modifications? So some modifications or even enhancements of the stretches that Nicole just shared with us. Um, actually one that she shared last week, I think it was, um, in a stretch session that she did, um, was when working on the temple area or even the jaw area to do some movement with your face. And so if you are pressing into that temporal area with your fingertips, you could then go into opening your mouth wide. That's gonna give you a nice stretch in those muscles as well. Um, but something else that I do with a lot of patients is work on that TMJ area. So if you're coming in to this muscular section here on the jaw, you're gonna do the same thing by after you do those circles, you can then go into an open mouth position. And that's really helpful if you have any TMJ issues. Um, and then going forward, she went into um, the crossing of the hands on your chest. So that is something that is really helpful where you were looking up and then turning with that um, extended neck. Something else that I like to add into that is to kind of combine um, the door frame stretch that she did. And so if you are just doing one hand at a time, you can then take that arm back. You're gonna to look toward that same, sorry, opposite from that arm and tilt back. And if you use your fingertips, if you keep that hand stretched open, you're gonna feel that stretch coming down the neck into the chest and all the way down to your hand. And so you can do about the same amount of time. Um, and then you would switch sides there, okay? Um, and then continuing forward, 
if we looked at the piriformis stretch, um, or sorry, let's do the lunge first that you did. Um, so I talked about, I work with a lot of expecting families. I'm also expecting. Um, and so I'm also working from home and doing things with my children, which you probably heard, I'm sorry, <laughs> a little while ago. Um, but the way that you can modify that stretch, I have an adjusting table here that I'm gonna use to show you. So Nicole did it in a full standing lunge. Um, if holding that lunge is too much for you, sometimes um, as a pregnant person, we can have other things going on, especially if you're not able to get out and get adjusted. Um, and so going into this position down on the floor with your knee resting so that you're not um, using as many muscles, you can then lean forward from here and you can do that same thing where you're reaching up and over. Um, so it may just be a little bit easier on you. And then I'm gonna transition into that piriformis stretch that she showed you with the cross leg. So if you wanted to, you could also lay down. So I'm gonna show you here, hopefully you can see me. You would lie on your back. You're gonna bring one leg up and rotate it. And you're gonna to try to cradle this as best as you can in your hands. Your other leg is gonna be extended down. Here, you're gonna hold on to that leg and then you're gonna push into your hands. And so you should get a very similar stretch there for that muscle, okay? Awesome, awesome, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to our screen. Let me see. There we go, can you see that? Yes. Okay, so again, we have all of these steps here for you. Um, we did not type out the modifications just because we felt like that was gonna be um, a little bit excessive on here, but you can definitely go back to our YouTube channel so that you can see those modifications if you need them. Okay, so coming into the health effects. Um, so with all of this sitting that we're doing, um, which honestly a lot of us do on a regular basis anyways at work, things are just a little bit different now that we're at home and you may not have um, the best equipment that you would have had in your workplace. So with that, we want to take time to mention this. Um, so being a doctor of chiropractic, I um, focus quite a bit on the nervous system. And so some things to remember is that if you aren't moving, um, taking the time to move or not able to get adjusted, then areas that are not moving, unfortunately, can result in some interference in the way your nervous system and your body overall is functioning. And so with an adjustment, normally what I would be doing um, is correcting those misalignments for wellness care. Um, and sometimes as corrective care. Right now we are limited to acute care only. Um, but with that, then your body is going to be in a better position to function well. And so with chiropractic, ultimately what I'm doing in my office is creating the optimal position for your body to function and to have good health. Um, so those are just some things to keep in mind that if you are sitting down all day long that position is putting stress on your body. And so we wanna eliminate that stress by doing some of those stretches that we discussed, as well as giving your body the good fuel that you need. Did you wanna add anything there, Nicole? No, I think you covered it. Absolutely. Okay, awesome. So I'm gonna go up to the next slide. Okay, so did you want to? Yeah, so let's talk about environment. Um, this is another thing that we wanted to discuss with you guys too. I know we harped a lot about proper body mechanics and make sure that you're positioning everything well, um, but we did want to mention, you know, potentially switching it up. Okay. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't mean that you're going to be in these different areas, you know, for extended periods of time, but, you know, doing things like taking it outdoors. Um, you know, I myself just the other day, I started working out on my porch and it was just a nice break from being in my work home work environment. Um, it just kind of felt a little bit better. It's felt a little less stressful, especially since we are trying to um, limit that, or excuse me, since we are trying to social distance and we're not able to like 
do things or go places. So if you're able to take that work outdoors, it's going to give you not, not only you, but also your children, you know, an opportunity to just kind of explore and play and, you know, get that added benefit of that, you know, that fresh air, that vitamin D, um, you know, and I was listening to this podcast the other day and one thing, um, it was a wellness podcast. And one of the things that they mentioned was um, you should, if you can, early in the morning or right when you wake up, go outside, okay, take in that vitamin D, because what it's going to do, it's going to help to reset your circadian rhythm, and it's going to help you sleep better at night, so I just thought that was really interesting, and I've been trying to implement that into my own routine, along with my son and my husband, um, so it's just a nice little way to switch that up. Um, if you are, you know, somebody who's working where maybe you have a desktop, or your work cannot be taken outside for whatever reason, open your windows, you know, move to a space where there are windows, big, bright, open windows. I'm in my dining room right now because this is the area where I get the most light. Um, but open those windows, make sure that fresh air is, is coming in, you're getting that natural light, um, and it just, it has a better feel to it. Um, the other thing is to add plants, okay? So, when you add plants, it's just going to create a nicer environment. Um, it just adds that vibrance. Um, I unfortunately am somebody who, I, I have a black thumb. I cannot uh, keep a plant alive to save my life. Um, so uh, I, you know, really searching for um, more self-sustaining plants like succulents, um, different things like that. Um, if you're really bad, have a fake plant. I got a fake plant right over there. And it, you know what? It makes me feel a little bit better and it will never die. Um, but it's just you know, something that you can add. Um, one thing I did want to kind of talk about too um, is if you're somebody who is familiar with different learning styles, um, there's this one um, theory. It's called the Gardner's Theory of Multiple Intelligences. And essentially what it's saying is that people learn in um, eight different ways or there's eight different intelligences. And one of those ways is called naturalist. So essentially what that means is um, you have a, an option or you, you can learn better or focus better um, when you're placed in nature or when you have nature around you. And so I just thought that was really interesting um, to kind of include in this because when you're doing different things or, you know, switching up your environment a little bit, it may help you to um, focus a little bit more. Do you want to add anything, Erica? No, that was perfect. Um, so again, with the plants, if you are somebody who doesn't have the opportunity to go outside, you don't have an outdoor space, um, bringing some of those plants, like Nicole mentioned, the succulents, cactus, um, aloe vera, those are really plant, really easy plants um, to keep up with as long as they're getting sunshine. You don't have to water them too much. Um, but having, yes, fake plants are good too. <laughs> they're going to liven your spirit, definitely. Um, but having some real plants are also going to improve the air quality in your home. So that is something else that is really beneficial if we're spending so much time um, at home in this space. Okay, let's see. So that kind of concludes everything that we had to share with y'all. Um, and so we're gonna give you all the opportunity to ask some questions. Um, you can utilize the chat feature if you would like, because again, this is being recorded if you don't want your voice um, or picture on the screen. Um, and so I'm gonna also scroll up here just in case any of you would like to um, disconnect at this time so that you can see our contact information. Um, so if you do have questions but maybe don't want to ask them over this video, this is the information for Nicole. And again, all of this information will be on the YouTube channel in case you need to jot it down. Um, and then this is the information for myself. Um, so we are so happy that you're able to join us. Um, and let's open up for some questions. So I'm going to give you guys a few seconds to type it into the chat box. Um, uh, and real quick, just to let you know um, a little bit about connecting with us too. So, um, like I mentioned, I do uh, mobile massage as well as have an office. Unfortunately, right now I'm not able to physically work on people. Um, but I do have virtual pain and postural assessments open. So that's where we get on Zoom. I take a look at your body positioning, um, you know, go through a, a specific intake, um, and then I give you some ideas and tips uh, of things that uh, you can utilize to help alleviate that pain. I also have virtual self-massage and stretch sessions. It's called virtual yo massage, um, where essentially I'm showing you um, some breathing exercises to relax the nervous system, showing you how to do some gentle stretching, 
and how to use a self-massage ball to help alleviate that stress and tension in your body. So that's what I have open right now until we are able to go, or until I'm able to go and practice massage again. So Eric, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit more. Let me see if anybody's had it. Sure. So um, as I mentioned, I am still open. I am only able to take on acute care patients right now. Um, and so on Mondays, Thursday, Monday and Thursday evenings, and then Saturday mornings, I am in the office seeing patients. Um, we are taking all precautions necessary. I wear mask and gloves. Everything is sanitized in between patients. I don't have any extra um, personnel in the office, if the office at this time, um, just to minimize how many people are coming in and out. Our waiting room is currently closed. Um, and so you get to wait in the comfort of your vehicle <laughs> until I call you in. Um, but with that, with stress, again, I know, I'm sorry, I don't usually talk so much about stress, but we're just in kind of a stressful period right now in our lives. Um, and so with that, you have um, the possibility of having flare-ups. So maybe if you had old injuries um, or new injuries with things that are coming up, um, those are all reasons that you can get in. Um, if you have questions about whether or not what you have going on qualifies you for care, you can always reach out to me um, to any of those areas of contact. Um, and then the other option is if you really don't want to get out um, and expose yourself at all, then I do have telehealth options as well that we can set up. And it's kind of similar to what Nicole is doing. Um, you share what you have going on, I do an assessment, and then I show you different ways that you can um, alleviate some of that at home. Awesome. Well, we don't have any questions. So if, if oh, yes, we do. Oh, she was just saying, <laughs> Cynthia was saying, thank you. It was very informative. I enjoyed the stretches and now plan to keep them up. Good. Um, well, for those of you at home or viewing this later, if you do have any questions, feel free to contact us um, either separately or we have a, now we have a Facebook page um, where you can find us and uh, find our email information as well. So we look forward to hearing you and hopefully working with you uh, at a later date. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.